Uh, uh, my name is Fan Chao Zhong from Shandong University. Uh, I am undergraduate student now. It's my pleasure to present our work, Ceramic 3D Printed Sweeping Surfaces. And our collaborators are from School of Computer Science and School of Me Mechanical Engineering. And my supervisor is Lin Lu. These days we can see that desktop ceramic 3D pr printer get more and more popular for designers, artists, and makers. As a highly viscous pseudo-plastic liquid, the printing material clay produces featured aesthetics, as we can see it in the picture. However, the model design process is complex and uh, unfriendly to people without modeling experience. And no modeling tool can be optimized for plain 3D printing. In addition, there are special constraints. Firstly, too large inclination of cost model cannot support itself and collapse. And because of the viscosity of clay, if the printing path is discontinuous, moving the print head without extruding will thus pull on the structure and induce unwanted deformations. Let's amplify it over time and uh, eventually lead to failure. So our goal is to propose a modeling tool for ceramic 3D printing. It's designed for ordinary users to make ceramic 3D printing more easily. And the tool integrates the ceramic printing constraints, includes self-supporting, non-self-intersection, and uh, collision-free. And then generate the printing file, namely G-code, with the guarantee that the extruder tries a single continuous path without stops. During the fabrication, our continuous path avoids the potential collision between the printing head and the physical model. Okay, I told purpose a method for integrate tour paths planning and uh, support structure generation. The work guarantee a single continuous printing path for the entire model. But the, the support structure needs to be manually removed later. For at all proper uh, method of forming shells by sweeping with a curve. The input is simple, but the generated models are very limited. Takahashi et al. explored the combination of the height position of the extruder and the amount of extruded material to enhance the capability of FDM. And uh, here is basic pipeline for our framework. Input of work is three curves joined with B spline or predefined line, as CSCT and five curves shown in figure. The, use, the user completes the drawing of the three curves on a two-dimensional plane. After that, a model conforms printing constraints is automatically generated. And then a single continuous path generated and uh, stored in a file format of which is G-code. And finally, use a 3D printer to fabricate. I will introduce the last three phases specifically. First, I will introduce sweeping surface modeling and the problems need to be solved. The canvas used to draw CS and CT is correspondent to a plane across the C axis in what coordinates. The canvas used to draw phi is correspondent to X or Y plane. As you can see, the CS is located at the starting position of phi. The CT is located at the end position. And uh, the every transition curve is obtained by interpolation located at one of the point on phi. In the figure, each blue vertical line represents a transition curve. 
We sample uniformly on CS and CT. The number of samples is the same, forming a one-to-one -one correspondent relationship. Similarly, we sample on five. Afterwards, we get an intermediate point on each transition curve by interpolation. The lowest point of each transition curve overlap with a point on phi. Then we have the point cloud for the entire model. All the adjustments are for this discrete point. As we said before, the transition curve is obtained by interpolation. So we provide a control curve for users to edit the interpolation function to have more freedom on the surface shape. It's actually a cubic spline with natural boundary. However, there are potential problems to be aware of. Firstly, in the absence of support structure, part of the slope angle too large are likely to collapse. And secondly, even if there is no self-intersection on phi, the generated model may exist. These are all problems that we need to solve. In order to solve the first problem mentioned just now, we need to detect the model and locally modify the part whose slope angle exists the overhang threshold so that achieve self-support. In our experiment, the threshold is 57 degrees. The acquisition of this value will be studied later. Specifically, we traverse the sample point along the axis for each sample point if its slope angle is larger than the threshold, we compute the new position of the sample point. Let's satisfy the threshold and then drag it to there. Then we apply the same translation to the following point on the curve. During the process of sweeping, collision may occur between the transition curve, leading to self-intersection of the model. When a straight line connecting two points on phi is close to the center point O, like the green line in the picture, the two transition curves located at these two points may collide. So it's the next problem we need to solve. We traverse any two points on phi, and if the straight line connecting them is close to the center point O, we apply further track for their transition curves. If the distance between two inter intermediate points on the transition curve is approximately zero, the sweeping surface is self-intersected. Then we compress CS and CT to eliminate self-intersection. By the way, we operate on point and don't need to compute the function of the curves. In the next stage, we guarantee we generate a G code file that records the printing pass and the amount of extrusion. First of all, we should pay attention to two things. The first is to keep the printing pass continuous. And the second is to deal with the possible collision between extrusion head and the printed model. The two pictures on the left shows the collapse caused by discontinuous printing pass. For the second problem, we will make a specific statement later. The third picture shows the collision between extrusion head and the printed model. As mentioned before, we generate a single path to ensure that the printing process is continuous without interruption. However, if always use this path generation algorithm, there is potential collision as mentioned before. Assume that the height of the extrusion head is edge. The height difference between CS and CT is greater than edge. When the highest point of CS is printed, the second highest point of CT has been printed. And their height difference is this edge. Then collision will occur. Therefore, we improve the path generation algorithm and code it adaptive zigzag path algorithm. The image on the right shows the printed model by the path generated using the new algorithm. We divide the model into two parts. They are shown in blue and red. 
for the red part, we use the sampling method mentioned before and generate this actual path shown as the green printing path in figure. For the blue part, we calculate the axis value of returning point. For every value, we look up the highest point of every transition curve, which has the nearest distance with it as the returning point, such as the purple point in figure. And uh, generate the z actual path as the yellow path shown in figure. In, in this way, we guarantee that the extrusion head will not collide with the model when it moves. Too much extrusion amount goes on controlled surface quality, waste of materials, and uh, more fabrication time, and thus uncertainty. But if extrusion amount is insufficient, the overlap area between the layers will be too small and cause the model collapse, like the left feature. Therefore, we propose the adaptive institution amount computation to get the appropriate value. The optimized result is shown in the right picture. In the algorithm, we keep the position of the sampling point unchanged and adjust the amount of institution simply by changing the line width. We traverse every printing point from the bottom layer to the top layer and keep the line width of the current point and previous line point of the neighboring layer equal, where expanding or reducing their width simultaneously with the set scale until, until the proportion of overlap reach two divided by three. Based on the range of parameters, we can deduce that the threshold we used before is 57 degrees. Finally, here are some printed results. We invite, we invite 10 undergraduate, undergraduate students to perform the surface design. It takes two to 10 minutes for them to finish designing the CSCT and the file. And we pick some samples from the user created surfaces and fabricated them with our two desktop 3D printers. The screen shows three printing results of the first 3D printer. These are other three printing results of another 3D printer. And uh, we fired the models to make them more rigid. In fact, more than just desktop printing, we can apply our framework to large scale mod model printing and some materials with similar properties to clay can also be used, such as cement. The picture shows the chair we fabricated with cement. To de demonstrate the printing process, we shot a video. First, we drop a snail using our framework. and then fabricate it with our desktop 3D printer. We can see that the shell is thicker than the head. The fabrication process takes about seven minutes. In conclusion, we have proposed a framework for user interactive sweeping surface modeling, integrate the ceramic printing constraints like self-supporting without self-intersection and uh, collision-free, and generate a single continuous printing path. We improve on the range of models that can be printed in clay, and the printing process is reliable. The first limitation is that we didn't do stress an analysis for the models. For example, the, the winds of the pigeon in the picture are easily broken. 
second, the shapes that can be formed by soy paint are limited. We are going to try more curves 